Hi everybody. I'm here to talk to you a little bit about a computer application called GeoGebra. And I'm going to talk about it as a way to think about moving your math instruction away from worksheets and drilling and doing the same types of problems over and over again. And instead, using uh, this tool to make um, mathematics a little more about mathematical thinking, solving problems, figuring things out, which is really what we want students to be able to do. The first thing that I'd like to do is introduce a problem that we're going to solve using GeoGebra, just as an example to show you how it works. So here we have a video. You can see we have two routes, two ways of getting from one point to another. And I have a little animation. This is how I would show this problem to students, give them a little bit of a hook so they can uh, see the question that I'd really like them to answer. And that is, which of those two routes is going to be shorter? So to do this in GeoGebra, I have the picture here on my desktop. And so I'm going to clear out uh, my GeoGebra, turn on the axes, and um, I'm just going to take that picture and drag it in to GeoGebra, like that. I'm going to move this around so that the picture is right on the axis. And now I can use some of the measurement tools in GeoGebra uh, to figure out which one is actually shorter. I'm going to use the circular arc tool, and I'm going to uh, measure this arc for route A. If I click the center of the circle, then I click the starting and ending points for this route. And if I go to the algebra view, I can now see the length of that arc using the GeoGebra coordinate system. Okay, so I have measured the distance for route A, and we have a length of 4.43 units of length. Let's now measure the other one. Go to the circular arc tool, and again, I'm going to click on the center of the circle, click on that point and the end of that circular arc there. I'm going to do the same thing over here. So click there, click on the ending point, and click there as well. So, uh, and the last thing I need to do is measure the distance from point J to point H, because that represents the center part. So you can see now that I have these different measurements that GeoGebra has given me, and as I move um, my, my mouse over these different parts, it gives me the name that GeoGebra has uh, assigned to each of these parts of the diagram. So this distance I already have, to find this total distance, I want to add the length of arc D to the length of segment A and add that to the length of arc E, which is here. So I'm just going to add D plus A plus E and I get my total distance of 3.94. And GeoGebra tells me that this number B represents the sum of D and A and E. So we can see pretty clearly that B is a shorter distance than C. Uh, and C again represents the total distance um, around the outside. So the students have now come up with their prediction of which one they think is shorter. And the last step is to actually show them what the answer is. So we can do that in this slide. So I play this video and we're given those two points, a similar video to what we started out with, but now we get to see it from start to finish. And sure enough, it looks like route B is the winner. This way of starting a problem with a little video or image to grab the student's attention, uh, then give them an opportunity to ask for information or make measurements, answer questions that they might have about the initial video or, or image, and finally showing them the answer to their problem, uh, kind of these three different acts this framework was designed by uh, a former math teacher named Dan Meyer, who um, has created a whole bunch of problems like this, and he's put them at this website. You should go check it out. It's something that I do with my, my students quite a bit, just as a way of uh, doing something different from teaching them the next section of the textbook or the next concept. It's a new way to get them to ask questions and be curious, because ultimately that is what mathematical thinking is all about. It's not about 
doing steps one through five over and over again through a sheet of problems. It's really all about asking students to experiment, to ask questions about things that they see, things that interest them, and to be able to actually answer those questions using the tools that either you've given them or the tools that you're going to give them. And so being able to have your students do these sorts of things is really powerful and is really much closer to what uh, mathematicians actually do in their work. So the next thing that I want to show you um, is an example of a situation that, that I've given students. Make a sketch of a triangle with sides that measure one, two, and three units. If you ask students to do this, you'll probably get something that, that looks a lot like this. No big deal. Let's see what happens when we try to do this within GeoGebra. So I'm going to go to GeoGebra, uh, clean this out, because we're going to kind of start from scratch. So we'll just delete everything that I just uh, created. And I'm going to make, using the segment with given length tool, I'm going to make three line segments. One of length one, a second of length two, and a third of length three. The light blue point, if you click on it, you can kind of rotate it around. And the dark blue point, you can move the segment anywhere you want. And so what I uh, would like to do here is see if I can construct this triangle um, so that we can kind of see what this, what this triangle really looks like. So let's move that over here and start moving the points around like so. Okay, so that probably has to swing down a little more. Uh, let's zoom in and try to see better. Okay, so we'll swing that one down a little bit more, this one down a little bit more. All right, so they're, they're almost touching. Maybe um, try a little bit more, a little bit more. And you'll notice that as you try to complete this task, eventually it seems like you're always taking these line segments, putting them lower and lower and lower. That looks pretty close, but when you zoom in further, you realize they're not actually touching. The reality of this situation is that the only way these two points can be right on top of one another is if they are all on the same line. The math term we use for that is collinear. The only way that they could actually touch is if they are on the same line. That does not make a triangle. What we've just shown through this simple problem uh, definition of saying make this triangle is uh, an idea that's pretty important in geometry, which is the triangle inequality theorem, which sets limits for the sides of triangles that can actually exist and create a triangle. You can only have certain sets of side lengths within a triangle. And so instead of just telling students that, you can put them in the position of discovering that fact through uh, an activity like this. I like to use GeoGebra as a way to make two scale drawings. Uh, I can make a quick sketch and just say this is three and that's five, but in, in reality, why do that when we could actually have a scale drawing that is three units on one side and five units on the other. This has lots of applications, talking about similar shapes. Uh, will, some, will, will an image fit within the border that you've given it? Uh, lots of possibilities. Uh, you might as well, if you can, with a tool like GeoGebra, make drawings that are, that are to scale, and then you don't have to worry about uh, whether it's actually possible. There have been a bunch of times when I've made up problems that are geometrically based and I haven't done this and because I haven't taken the time just to check and make sure that the dimensions of whatever I've created are possible, uh, sometimes I end up with questions on my test that can't be solved. Not a great situation, try to avoid that and so I try to use this as a, as a tool as often as I can. Uh, the next thing. We all uh, might remember from one of our classes the area of a triangle formula. And so one thing that I've posed to students before is here we have a triangle and we might remember the area of a triangle formula, one half the base times the height. The base has, is nine units long, the height is four units long, one half four times nine, half of 36 is 18. My question would be what would happen to the area if we took this point B? and slid it to the left. And I've given students the option, I make them vote. Do they think it would stay the same? Do they think it would increase the area or decrease the area? 
So simple, they just have to decide what they think. And then you can give them a tool like GeoGebra and say, okay, test out your theory. So let's do that. I'm gonna go to GeoGebra one more time, delete everything that I made before. Uh, I'm going to turn on the axes uh, so we can make this as similar to what we started with as possible. Okay, and I'm gonna uh, construct, uh, I'm going to construct that triangle. So I'm going to start with the line y equals 4, put that across the top. I'm going to put a point here. There is a reason that I'm, I'm clicking here instead of over uh, here. The reason is that GeoGebra uh, tries to help you out whenever you're clicking close to an axis. So if you click close to it, it actually puts it right on the axis. But the problem with that is that I, I can't slide it anywhere. It will only uh, slide along the y-axis, and I don't want to be confined that way. So anyway, I'm going to put that there. I'm going to put another point at the origin and the other point at 9, 0. Make a triangle just like this. Click on those uh, three and then click back on the first point. So now I have my polygon. And I'm going to slide this over so that it's where it needs to be, right there. If I go to View and then go to the Algebra View, GeoGebra automatically calculates the area of this shape to be 18. So it gives it the name poly1. If I want to, I can uh, rename this uh, something else if I don't like that name. So I could just call it my triangle. Okay, so it gives me that nice name. I'm going to hide the label because I don't want to see it. So I'm going to do that. Um, and now you need to watch the area as I take this point and slide it over to the left. So, are you ready? Here we go, boom. You notice the area doesn't change. I've had students who are really, really confident in themselves, they know the formula of the area of the triangle, who are just really confused by what they see in the situation. And the reality is that the formula that we're taught, the one-half base times height, actually is all about the uh, one-half the base length times the height that is perpendicular to the base. So it is still this height right here. So no matter where you move this point, the area of that triangle will always be 18 square units. So again, we have set up uh, a, a simple problem for students. We've shown it visually, and it's really easy to uh, then have students test out what their theory is using the tools that are here. Uh, very often to teach them how to use GeoGebra, I will just make a screencast like I'm doing right now uh, to show them some of the steps. Our students tend to be pretty good at figuring out how software works, and so showing them through a video how to step through software has been pretty effective for me. The next thing I want to show you, this is a, a diagram that um, I often will, will make when I am teaching area of a rhombus. Uh, uh, area of parallelograms, rather. So you can see here, uh, I might give this to students and say, how do we find out the area? Uh, I would do this now in, in GeoGebra. Makes it really easy because uh, the way I used to do this was using paper. And so I would cut paper out in that shape and uh, I can't cut in straight lines. It just doesn't work. So um, the students would have to squint a little bit to, to see. Um, what I was trying to show them. But with this, I can just create that diagram pretty easily using my polygon tool. So I will make that shape just like this. That's my first one. Um, notice that it's labeling everything. You can turn that off by going to Options, Labeling, and have it do no new objects. Uh, so I'm going to select everything, um, everything through the, the settings here. And I'm just going to make it so it turns off the label. So now we don't see that, all right? And I'm gonna add one more um, this way. And so now I can take these, piece them together, and see here is my rhombus. What is the area? What is the area if we treat this as two separate triangles? What is the area when we treat this as a rectangle? And so you can kind of show students that that shape can be decomposed into a simpler shape that they know how to find the area of, and they can learn again that the formula for the area of a parallelogram like this is the length of the base times the perpendicular height. And so you are showing that 
um, in a way that's, that's pretty easy. This took no prep time. I did not have to cut any paper at all. I just threw some, some points on the coordinate plane and GeoGebra did the rest. So uh, since you are still learning how to do a lot of this in GeoGebra, um, a really good way to get a sense of what is possible is to go to the GeoGebraTube.org website. Um, just go to that website. There's lots of stuff available. Um, if you, this is one on equivalent fractions, kind of a neat little uh, applet that you can play around with. Um, this was made by someone who really knows his GeoGebra. Um, and there are lots of these experts who are out there making really, really nice stuff um, that makes it easier for those of us that don't know as much to kind of see how something is done. Or if we like a tool and we really, really think it would uh, work well with our students, we can just directly give it to them. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff up there. Um, this was equivalent fractions. This is a neat little demo all about um, motivating the area of a circle using kind of an uh, area argument. So lots of capability here. Um, increasing the number of triangles, kind of understanding limit behavior um, and what that means. And so kind of saying, well, a circle can be decomposed into something that looks like this, kind of motivating the idea behind the area formula pi r squared. Um, so it's pretty powerful. Uh, I also put something together for uh, Josie's class. Uh, she was teaching base 10 blocks, and so uh, she gave this to some of her students and said, well, ask your mom and dad to pick a number, uh, let's say 43. And so their task was to change these sliders um, and make it so that uh, the representation, the number represented by the base 10 blocks was 43, what they thought it was. And then to check, am I right, you click here, and it tells you what number is actually represented there. Uh, and so this makes it so that there's a visual representation of uh, what they're doing in class. This can be in every student's um, home, on every student's home computer or iPad, uh, because this is just a website. They can go to it and do it on their own. Um, and that's a lot better than perhaps taking the base 10 blocks home. The parents have a really easy way to check and see what their, what their children are learning. So there's lots of great stuff out there. The easiest way to, uh, to find what's out there is just to go to geogebratube.org and search. So this is something that I put together for my pre-calculus students um, as a way to visualize um, uh, geometric series. So the idea here is that I have a certain number of, of my heads and I can change the number that are stacked on top of each other. So I'm going to make this a little, uh, little bigger there. So you can see I can change the number of heads that are stacked. And you can see that as I continue to add heads to that stack, it doesn't continue to grow. And this is a concept in geometric series uh, where the sum of an infinite number of terms, so here the height of an infinite number of these heads, reaches it converges to a specific value. So this is kind of a, a difficult concept for students to get, but visually, uh, you at least give students um, a way in. So there's a lot of potential for building, your, uh, building tools that you can use in the classroom, for using uh, GeoGebra applets that other people have made from around the world, it's all out there. A lot of uh, potential for changing um, the way you approach math in your classroom.